So here we have an examination style question where we're given a periodic function of time, in this case a square wave, and we're asked to find the values of the period, the fundamental frequency, and a notch, the DC value, and to comment on whether the signal is even, odd, or neither even nor odd. Now, first of all, the fundamental period is the time it takes for the signal to repeat itself. So once you've identified the actual signal, so this is the time it takes to repeat, so from 0 to 2 pi. So now we know the period. You can invert that. So if you want to find the fundamental frequency in hertz, f naught would be 1 over t, but omega naught is 2 pi over t. So we can find the fundamental frequency in radians per second. So that's 1 radian per second. It also asks for the DC value. So the DC value is equal to um, 1 over t, the integral from 0 to t, f of t, dt. But that is simply 0 if we have an odd signal. And here we clearly have an odd signal. So there's symmetry around the origin and f of negative t equals f of, or negative f of t. So it's odd because f of minus t equals minus f of t for all values of t. So clearly the average value or the DC value is zero because this area is equal to this area or at least the negative of this area. So the total DC value is zero. So these are your answers for part A. Now the question goes on <clears throat> to say, show that f of t can be expressed as a series. So this is clearly a Fourier series. We can tell that it's odd because it's only sine components. So we'd start by acknowledging that there are no cosine components because the signal is odd. We've already established the signal's odd, so there are no cosine components. A n is zero. We then go on to calculate B n sine components. So the definition is the integration of f of t times the sine of the fundamental times n multiplied by t, 2 over t. Now f of t, if you look at the sketch, is either 3 or negative 3. So it's 3 from 0 to pi, and then it's negative 3 from pi to 2 pi. So we integrate from 0 to pi of 3, but then we add negative 3 times sine nt pi to 2 pi. And the reason it's nt is because omega naught is equal to 1. So that's a straightforward integration. The integration of sine is negative cosine. And then we need to divide by n. So that sine gives me negative cosine. Uh, or I should say this sine gives me negative cosine. And the earlier sine does the same. And if you put in your limits, of 
0 and pi. If you put pi in and 0 in and 2 pi and pi, depending on whether n is even or odd, you get a different answer. So if n is even, you get negative 1 minus minus 1, which is negative 1 plus 1. So basically you get 0 for even values of n. So if you put a value of 2 for n, you would get um, you would get 0. And if you have an odd number for n, like 1, then these numbers add up. So you have minus minus 1, minus minus 1 is 2, and then another 2, and you end up with 4. So you have two possible outcomes. So that, that's the constant, and the n is taken out. So you end up with either 0 or 4. So for even n, it's always 0. For odd n, it's 4 times 3 is 12 over n pi. So that's the answer. That's bn. But we need to show that that looks like 1 over pi times 2n minus 1. So f of t is the summation of bn times sine n omega naught t. So this is bn, and that's n omega naught t, but that only applies for odd n. Now, another way of saying n is odd is to say n is equal to twice some number, which is even, therefore, minus or plus 1. So 2k minus 1. That's another way of saying that we have an odd number. So I can replace n with 2k minus 1. And I do that twice for the coefficient and for the angle, for the harmonic. OK, so here for the 2k minus 1 harmonic, the coefficient would be that. So I can now rewrite that, replacing 2k minus 1 again with n. Hang on, no, that's not right. So that should be 2n minus 1 t. So I'm just replacing k with t. But so k with n. Now, n is not the harmonic. And that's important to note. So n isn't the harmonic. So um, 2n minus 1 is the harmonic number. n is not the harmonic number. That's important because for the first harmonic, you would have this equal to 1. So 2n minus 1 is equal to 1, not n. OK, so that's part b complete. Now the question asks, how many harmonics would be required to retain 93% of the signal's power? So I think the first thing we should do is find the signal's power so we can find 93% of it. So to find the power of a signal, you simply integrate the signal squared over one period, then divide by the period. Now, f of t is either 3 or negative 3. And if you square it, you're always going to get 9. So it doesn't really matter. We don't need to split this into two integrations. And it's easier just to say it's the integration of 3 squared, and I replace 2 t with 2 pi. So if you integrate that, you get 9 t, and if you replace the limits, you end up with 2 pi cancelling with 2 pi, and you end up with 9. So that is the signal power, 9 watts. And the question is saying, how many 
um, components do you need? How many harmonics do you need to retain 93% of that? So I'll, what I'll do is do this the long way. I'm going to look at each harmonic. I'm going to look at the coefficient for that harmonic and the power of that harmonic. So I'll just write here what I'm actually finding. So this is the power of the harmonic. This is the sine coefficient. This is the cumulative power. So that means the power of all the harmonics, including this one, or up to and including this one, the cumulative power. And this is the percentage power. So what percent is the power out of nine? So for the first harmonic, we have 12 over pi. I'm getting that from here. So if we have the first harmonic, we're going to have n equals 1 or 2n minus 1 equals 1. So we have 12 over pi. So that's the coefficient. If you square that and divide by 2, that will give you the power. And because we only retain the first harmonic, that's the cumulative. And this divided by 9 times 100 gives you 81%. And you can keep doing that for all the remaining harmonics. So obviously the even harmonics um, don't count. So there's nothing there, nothing there. Right, so <clears throat> what we're interested in <clears throat> is the odd harmonics. So when you get to the third harmonic, 12 over 3 pi, that gives us a much smaller power, but if you add this to this, you get 8.106, and if you divide that by 9, you get 90%. That doesn't change with the fourth harmonic, but it does change with the fifth harmonic. So with the fifth harmonic, we're up to 93.3%, and that's above the 90% that was specified in the question. So the question is saying at least 93%. Sorry. So we're now at 93.3%. So that means that five harmonics are what we need. So we need at least five harmonics to retain 93% of the signal energy. So the question then goes on to say, if we were to band limit FFT, that means pass it through a low pass filter, what would be the 93% containment bandwidth? Or it's actually asking for the Nyquist rate, which is two times the 93% containment bandwidth. So, Let's find the highest frequency component. And because we're talking about the fifth harmonic, it'll be two times the fifth harmonic. And remember, F naught is simply one over T. And T is two pi. So it's simply two times five times one over two pi. And that gives you your Nyquist rate. All right, so you can't sample at that rate, but you would sample at a rate higher than the Nyquist rate. So that's the, this is the um, containment bandwidth. Let me just highlight that. So the, um, the 93% containment bandwidth is 5 times F0. What we want is the Nyquist rate, which is twice that. So the signal then asks, or then says, now you've passed it through your low-pass filter, we now sample it or oversample it. 
and they want a sketch of this sampled signal in the time domain and in the frequency domain. In the time domain, it's easy enough. You know that it's oversampled, so you're going to have more than 10 samples per period. So I've chosen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 12 samples per period. So they have to be regularly spaced and they need to track the signal. Now, because it's passed through a low pass filter, there probably will be slight ripples here. It won't be a perfect square wave. But for the purpose of this question, I think it's perfectly acceptable um, if you were simply to track the square wave. Okay, so as long as you label that as F, S, T, and you label that as T, you show the period, you show these amplitudes, 3 and minus 3, and you have at least, well, you have more than five samples per half wavelength. Right, so that's in the time domain. Now we need to look at the frequency domain. So in the frequency domain, when you sample a signal, what happens? In general, if you have a signal with a spectrum that looks like that, then when you oversample it, you end up with a repeating spectrum that has replicas of your original spectrum at fs and minus fs. And obviously, these repeat infinitely. So we have to do the same thing for the spectrum of this. But the spectrum of um, a sampled, sorry, a spectrum of a periodic signal is going to be discrete in frequency. So rather than having a nice continuous spectrum, what you're going to have is a discrete spectrum. So you've got your DC value of zero. You've got C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. So this is your spectrum. And because it's now oversampled, you expect it to repeat like that. And oversampled means there's going to be a guard band or a gap. There will be no overlap. There will be no overlap between the two spectra. So to get the mark for this question, you would need to label this. You would need correct um, identification of the components, so C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. You would need the DC value of zero, and you would need to repeat that in reverse at least once. Now, it would help if you had the negative side, but if you don't show the negative, you still would get the mark for this question. So what's essential is you include that, and at least one further replica. You should label at least some of these harmonics and show where the sampling frequency is. And also label the axis in frequency. So that's how you would answer a question like this. Um, and that's 25 marks on a typical exam question. I hope you found that helpful.